say what shape it will be. Please welcome to the stage CEO and co-founder of Collision and Web Summit, Paddy Cosgrave. What? Good morning, guys. How is everyone? Good? Ready for a good day? Great. Uh, yesterday evening, we had some fantastic speakers on stage to open, including the Prime Minister uh, of Canada and the fantastic mayor of this city, uh, John Tory. Last night, Night Summit, did anybody go to Night Summit last night? A few, good, good, good. Means a lot of people had a good long night, probably aren't here uh, just yet. We're incredibly excited to be uh, in Toronto for the very first time. Uh, and I'm really gonna get straight to it with our very first speaker on our opening day. Um, We've got quite a treat. So, our very first speaker, um, we're particularly excited to introduce our first speaker of the day. You might know him from incredible movies like Inception, Snowden, and Batman. But when he's not appearing on the silver screen, he's behind the screen at his tech platform, Hit Record. But ahead of that, we'd like to show you a clip showing some of Hit Record's evolution. My brother helped me set up this tiny little website, hitrecord.org. Even at that small scale, there were some people who wanted to make things together. I don't just mean people sharing things online. I mean people making things together that they couldn't have made without each other. We published books, put out records, screened our short films at film festivals, put on live events at big venues. We made a television show, things that no isolated individual could have made on their own. Let's get back to the fun stuff. Please welcome in conversation with Laurie Siegel, award-winning actor and co-founder of Hit Records, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Hi, guys. And this is Laurie Siegel, everybody, oh, yeah. and fantastic that, journalist. That's all for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Familiar with this guy? <laughs> Right? Uh, I'm so happy to be here with you. Yeah, it's really good. Thanks for coming right? out, you guys. Really good to see you here. So I know a lot of folks know you as an actor. I've come to know you as an entrepreneur over the last couple of years. And I've also known you've always been obsessed with the internet yeah. and this idea of creativity and collaboration. And so I want to jump right into Hit Record. But first, what is it about creativity and collaboration, like why this obsession? And if you don't believe he's obsessed with it, like go to his Twitter feed. I believe the last tweets, you asked people um, how, to, to, how would you ruin a date in one sentence, tweet him. I want to see everyone's tattoos, tweet him. Take a picture of the ground and post it. Literally, just like collaborate, tweet, you know. You love people, you love creativity. What is it? Well, I guess probably just to from a long time ago, I've been really lucky to get a lot out of creativity. I, I consider myself really fortunate that early in life, uh, I figured out, wow, I really love acting. And I happened to grow up in a suburb of Los Angeles where that was more available to me than most people in the world. And I had supportive parents who didn't pressure me into doing it, but uh, were, like I said, supportive in helping me do it. And uh, I've gotten so much joy and fulfillment out of those kinds of creative environments, being on set and acting with people, figuring out a scene, working on stuff, uh, that, uh, that I've always just, um, it's been one of my favorite things to do. It's really kind of, that's where my happiness has always come from, especially in my professional life, leaving aside family. And uh, yeah, so, the stuff that you see that you're talking about on Twitter is, is, is really just uh, <laughs> perhaps me feeling guilty that I've gotten so much joy and fulfillment out of this and wanting other people that might not have been uh, as privileged or fortunate as I've been to say like, hey, this is, this is something that we can all do together. And I want to get to hit record. And before we kind of get to it, let's talk about where it came from. And it seems to me, if I recall, like. 
it, you as an actor, hard to believe, but you were kind of getting rejected a lot. Yeah, it's not um, that hard to believe, but thank you. I'm, I'm you know, flattered you'd say that. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly where it came from. Uh, I was, well, I, I, like I said, I got to be an actor ever since I was a little, little kid, and then I quit when I was 19, because I wanted to go to college. Um, and, uh, and then when I wanted to get back into acting a couple years later, I couldn't get a job. No one would cast me in anything, and that was really, really painful, because when you're an actor especially, you're kind of, you need someone to cast you in order to do the acting. And, uh, they just believed you should be one thing and you believed you should be something different. Yeah, well, yeah, I believed I should be in their movie and they were like, I don't believe you should be in our movie. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so this, this, out of this pain came like sort of this realization like, okay, well, I, I can't wait around for someone to cast me in a part. I have to take responsibility for my own creativity. And hit record at that time was just this little turn of phrase, this little like moment of comfort or mantra that I had for myself, like, you know what? I'm not gonna wait for them to cast me. I'm gonna push the button. And, and the, the round red record button became this like symbol for me of like, I'm gonna hit record, I'm gonna push the button and start making my own things. And I started making my own little videos and songs and stories and stuff. And that's all hit record was at the time. This is like early mid 2000s. And, uh, and then my brother helped me set up a little tiny website. At, at first, it was literally a single page of HTML with a few links of little videos and stuff that I had made. And that's all it was. Uh, and we called it hitrecord.org after this little turn of phrase that I had been saying to myself. And um, very slowly, it sort of gradually evolved. Eventually, we, we put a little message board on that website and for like the techies out there. It's like one of those just PHP message boards, like prefab that anybody could set up. But the message board was where the community started. That was the right. beginning of people being able to like sign up, create an account on this message board. And what we saw was, okay, well some people, they wanna check out the little videos and songs and stuff that I'm making. But what a lot of people wanna do is make things together. And I remember seeing that because it, it wasn't what we had intended it for. But when we noticed that this is what, what people wanted to do, we are like, that's cool. And that's, that's sincerely new and different because just watching a video or listening to a song on the internet, it's not really that different from old technology, television or radio or movies or whatever. But using the internet to collaborate, to have people come together and work on things together that they wouldn't have been able to make on their own, that felt like, oh, this would have been impossible X number of years ago, really recently. This, this is new behavior that humans can now do they couldn't have done before right. because of this technology. And so we thought this is what Hit Record is really about, is this collaboration. And, and it resonated back with m my experience that I've always had because working on a set is a very collaborative thing. And a lot of the joy that comes from a set is being creative with other people. Right. And so from there, it sort of evolved, and, and this community, again, just gradually grew and started to thrive more and more, and people were making things together until uh, in 2010, it was almost 10 years ago now, uh, I got together with my friend and co-founder, Jared Keller, who's backstage somewhere, um, and we started saying, like, what if this community, this sort of collaborative creative process could power a production company? And uh, we figured out how to make that happen. We figured out how to set up the intellectual property laws, the terms of service, how um, people could remix each other, build off of what each other was doing, how if um, productions were monetized, how we could pay people. Um, and we made a list of things we'd like to accomplish. Like maybe one day we could use this sort of collaborative methodology to make a short film that could get into Sundance. Or one day we could publish a book or put out a record. And maybe one day we could like even make a TV show or something like that. And then over the years, we, we did all those things. And uh, our TV show won an Emmy, and we've worked with different brands, big brands like LG and Sony and Samsung, and nonprofits like the ACLU. And um, we've paid people almost three million bucks now. And uh, we have published books, and we've put out records. And I'm really, really proud of everything that we've gotten to do as a production company. And then just in the last couple of years, we sort of said, like, OK, so we did, we did all that, but we're hitting a certain limit of how many people can really be involved right. in this collaborative process? Because when we're the ones leading these productions, only so many people can come and get involved in those productions. 
And that's when we realized, like, okay, if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to open that up and let anybody come lead a project yeah. and really let a, an infinite number of people get involved in this collaborative process, we need better technology. And that's when we sort of waded into the world of technology, which is when I met you. Right. And I, would, to... and, I, and I want to get to that because I think a lot of things happen. And, and so everyone kind of understands how this works. So essentially, people come, they have an idea, artists are able to, to come to the platform, and everybody gets involved, and these things get funded, and everyone kind of comes together to create something. You guys have had this real success. And when I met you, uh, it was at... Uh, it was at Collision or Web Summit a couple of years ago, and a lot of things were happening. We were having this conversation about the internet and isolation, and things were getting kind of weird on the internet and social media. <laughs> In 2016. And, yeah, 2016, and I, I interviewed, I interviewed you. And the next day, Donald Trump was uh, elected president of the United States, and we were talking a lot about tech and isolation and social networks, and and also you know this idea of creativity and how creativity was getting harder because of the way social networks were set up. Um, and, and you were talking about how it was making the creative process a little bit more difficult. Can, explain that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So. And you can even explain it in the, the term of how you, you talked to me a little bit, of, compared it to the movies and, and, how you, and how you shoot movies. Yeah. Well, so I, I think that, to your point, creativity can be difficult when your incentives are all about how much attention can I get for this? Or in terms of movies, what's the box office gonna be? Or is this movie gonna make me famous? What's it gonna be like to walk the red carpet? When these are the kinds of things that you have on your mind, I think it's, it can twist what I've found to be that, that joyful, meaningful thing that I was talking about a minute ago. And where you really hit that joy, that kind of flow state, is, is not when you're focused on, on the red carpets and the attention and the box office, but when you're focused on the actual creative process itself of being on set and making stuff together with other people. And, and I do think that a lot of social media platforms today, um, they really emphasize the attention getting. Those are the incentives that you have. Uh, that's what the user experience provides you is what can you get? What are your goals? You can get followers. You can get likes. There, there isn't really a way for the business model of those media tech platforms to measure and monetize a meaningful creative experience. It's more about how much attention can I get? And, uh, and I think that when you set out to make a thing, whether it's a song or a short film or a story or whatever, and your ultimate path is gonna be posting it on one of these platforms, then you go through in your mind and you start thinking while you're in the middle of writing or singing or whatever, is this gonna get a lot of likes? How many followers is this gonna get me? And I think that's, that's not really good for the creative process. Did and you so, find yourself comparing yourself to other actors and their millions of Of course, of I'm yeah. definitely not which actors? immune to this. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm not gonna say which okay. ones. The probably obvious ones, I don't know. Yeah. Anyone, anyone that I, like, they, we're human. I think it's natural to compare okay. ourselves to each other, um, but I think that's that's sort of a human weakness that a lot that these platforms exploit to their advantage. And with Hit Record, what we're trying to build now is uh, a different kind of collaborative media platform that puts the emphasis less on how much attention can I get for this, and more how meaningful can this creative experience be with these other people. Less about hey, look at me and look what I've made, and more about yeah. what can we all make together. So let's talk about what you're doing. So in, that, in the time that we, I spoke to you then, you actually went out to Silicon Valley um, and you raised money to move Hit Record beyond a production company and really turn it into a technology company. So what does that mean? Explain the shift. You know, talk to me a little bit about who you raised money from. Sure, yeah, so we never had to raise money before. Uh, we made money as a production company when we would partner with brands or when we would make a TV show or something. Um, we would make money, we would pay our conjures, and the company was able to pay its bills and grow a bit. Um, but like I said, we were running into these limits of how many people can we really include when we don't have enough of a technology and product team to really build tools that allow people to effectively lead their own projects. And so, yeah, we went up to Silicon Valley saying like, hey, we've done all this as a production company. We've amassed this community that's really special, that has a uniquely positive and encouraging and safe sort of uh, feeling to it. 
and we think that this can be something that grows um, beyond a production company if we focus it uh, in terms of it being a platform for anybody to come and lead their own projects, but we need to be able to build the better tools, and that's why I didn't, we didn't want to raise money in Hollywood, which might have been easier because I, you know, I know lots of people in Hollywood. We wanted to go into Silicon Valley, and, uh, and we pitched technology VCs with this idea, and we were able to raise a great Series A, and we raised six and a half million dollars, and we were able to hire, we went from literally zero product people to now, you know, then we had one and now we have five. We had, you know, four engineers and then we had five and now we have 10. And now we're really finally able to start building things uh, that, are, that are gonna allow more and more people to come and, and, and lead their own projects and find the collaborators and have that creative experience, that find that meaningful, joyful experience that I've been lucky enough to to uh, enjoy my whole life um, of, of being creative with other people. I mean, it, you could have gone to Hollywood. You could have taken the easy, you know, the easy path, but you went to Silicon Valley, you know, and, and you very much kind of had to explain yourself as a, in this new type of context. And I know you're Joseph Gordon-Levitt, right? And I know that probably opened some doors. What was the most challenging part of having to, you know, not play entrepreneur, but actually go in and, and I'm assuming the timing was on your side because there is this narrative around technology about we need to find a better way to, to come together, collaborate, make it a little bit you know, less evil in, in some capacity. <laughs> um, you know, but what was the most challenging part? You know, talk to us about what you learned about yourself as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right that um, being an actor and being in some successful movies was helpful and open doors. There was also, though, a, a, another edge to that sword in that people, a lot of investors assumed, oh, you're an actor, sure, yeah, you're starting a company, you're not really going to be involved in it, and great. Um, but I think once I started talking to folks and saying like, hey, this isn't just a new idea that we just came up with, this is actually something we've been doing for almost 10 years now, we've amassed this community, never having spent any money on ads, we've worked with all these brands, we've you know, won an Emmy for our TV show, um, I've been heavily involved in this, we're really, really doing this. Um, people started to say like, oh wow, you really are doing this, okay, cool. And, uh, and yeah, we were able to find some great partners that have been so valuable, Javelin, Crosslink, Advancet, you know, these are, these are folks that are not just uh, investing money, these are folks that I'm on the phone with a lot because I, you know, admit, I haven't seen or been a part of software development, pro level software development, and uh, I don't want to, you know, have the hubris to say like, well, can't be that hard, I'll just, right. you know, I'll just do that. Uh, I want to surround myself with people who have that experience and, and uh, the smarts to really provide guidance. And so let's talk the business model, right? So now you're a venture-backed company that comes along with all sorts of new responsibilities um, and the pressure to make money. And uh, when it comes to internet companies and the business model, we've run into all sorts of problems in this new era when it comes to that. And what's good for business, as we've learned from social media, is oftentimes not good for human beings. Yeah. How do you avoid falling into the same trap that you're kind of fighting against when it comes to that attention economy? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So the, the problem that I was trying to articulate a second ago about how I think a lot of today's social media platforms can kind of corrupt a creative process, I don't think that the technology itself is a problem. I think actually that it, it's the business model to your question about business model. And this isn't an original thought for me, but I really recommend this book. It's called uh, 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Accounts Right Now by Jaron Lanier. Uh, it's a blunt title, but it's actually really sophisticated thinking. And his thesis is just that, that the business model of giving away a product or service for free while sort of opaquely collecting data about people and using that data to manipulate them uh, towards the will of advertisers who pay lots of money for the ability to manipulate all those users, that's not a sound business model that'll be good for humanity in the long run. That's, that's Jaron's whole thesis, and um, I, I think he's an incredibly smart thinker about this stuff. I recommend you read his book. He's become a friend of mine, and um, 
And, and so to your point about business model, uh, I was very clear from the beginning in all of these pitch meetings how I feel about that business model and that if we're going to evolve from a production company into a platform, uh, that we're not going to monetize hit record this way. Um, we've, we've never really uh, focused on sheer volume of eyeballs. We've always really focused on having our community and a, a real sincere depth of affinity um, from that community. And I think there's, there's plenty of ways that you can monetize uh, a platform like that that aren't working against the wills or sort of opaquely manipulating the wills of the community, but rather helping the community actually do what it wants to do, which is be creative together with other people. Um, and so uh, that's, those are the business models that, that we're you know, designing right now. I want to talk a little bit about this idea of creativity. Um, you said something to me, we had a pre-call, and you said something I related to quite a bit regarding creativity. And you, you were talking about moments of pain or anxiety. Um, I wish we had a couch so we could lay down. You could lay down while I ask you this question. Um, moments of pain or anxiety or discontent that you know, you're compelled to write or make something. You've been a creator your whole life. You, you know, this whole company is you trying to give back to other people and have them create. And I relate in that covering entrepreneurs for, you know, for 10 years, when you, look at, and when you look at art, the same theme kind of emerges and it seems that it's these moments of extraordinary discomfort and pain and like the worst stuff, like in mental gymnastics, I'm sorry if any of you guys are there, um, that lead to some of these incredible, creative, uh, interesting moments. And I'd be curious to know for you if there are any moments that you could think of of you know incredible discomfort or pain and and what creative what creativity that's led to sure well i mean the the first example is the pain i was talking about when i i couldn't get a role and hit record was born out of that uh i think there are big moments and small moments uh like that that's a really interesting question um i mean in my life the the best way for me to just quell any anxiety, whether it's big anxiety or small anxiety, is to sit down and, and just kind of focus and do something creative. Um, you know, and that could be like, you know what, I'm just gonna sit here and write meaningless rhymes. Just to like focus my mind and like stop the the whirlpool of of you know the way that the human brain can go. Um, or like, I don't know, the most painful thing in my life, and we're talking about hit record, uh, my brother, who, who I started Hit Record with, died in 2010, and it's the most terrible thing ever for me. Uh, he was my best friend, and, and uh, it was extremely painful. And um, there's no way to get around that kind of pain. Um, but one of the ways that I found uh, able to, myself able to kind of deal with it would be like writing. And I would, like, I would write him letters. And uh, I read it, even though he wasn't going to read them. Um, but just the the process of uh, of sitting down and writing and and making it a well written letter, you know, uh, something that he might enjoy really reading, um, and not to show to anybody, but just the process of expressing those thoughts and feelings. Um, I would 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 lift me out of. Uh, the kind of painful grief that any of you who've ever lost a, a close loved one knows um, that you can be feeling. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I absolutely, for myself, from my own experience, believe in the power of that, that whether you like to write or you like to draw or you like to sing or you like to, whatever it is that you like to do, um, don't, doesn't have to be some kind of professional thing. It doesn't have to be something that, you know, the judges on Idol would give you good marks for. It doesn't have to be, doesn't, it doesn't matter what it would look like or sound like to anybody else. It's about what it feels like uh, for me while I'm doing it or for you while you're doing it. That creative process, uh, I think is, well, like I said at the beginning, it's, it's just been the, the, the biggest source of joy and meaning for me in my life. And, um, and I, yeah, that's, I guess if there's the one thing that I am trying to kind of put the emphasis back on is, is that, that 
process and that feeling and that experience of doing it from your own point of view, not from other people's point of view, not, not caring about what it might look like to someone else, but just to, to appreciate the, the power of that experience that you yourself can 